Okay, so you're planning a short trip to Edinburgh, Scotland, and you want to know how to pack in as much fun and exploration as possible. Well, you're in luck. I've got family in Edinburgh, and I've been there more than a dozen times over the last 20 years. I've put together the perfect three-day itinerary for you, so you don't have to. I'm going to cover all the hot spots, including restaurants for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. So let's get into it. Day 1. Exploring the heart of Edinburgh. Nothing starts your day in Edinburgh better than a traditional Scottish breakfast, and no place does it better than the Little Larder. What makes this little cafe unique is its use of fresh, local produce in all of its dishes. And believe me, you can taste the difference. Here, you can enjoy local favorites like hash and porridge, or if you're extra hungry, their full Scottish breakfast is one of the best in the city and includes bacon, black pudding, sausage, roasted tomatoes, a potato scone, homemade beans, a poached egg, and buttered toast. With a full belly and a full day ahead, it's time to make our way to the next stop on our list, Edinburgh Castle. The castle offers complimentary guided tours with your paid admission. These are conducted by knowledgeable guides who provide insights into the castle's history and major events. On this tour, you'll visit St. Margaret's Chapel, the oldest surviving building in Edinburgh, built in the early 12th century. It was constructed by King David in honor of his mother, St. Margaret of Scotland. Your tour continues with a viewing of the Scottish crown jewels in the Royal Palace, which are displayed alongside the Stone of Destiny, an ancient symbol of Scotland's monarchy, used for centuries in the coronation ceremonies of its monarchs. Other historical sites on this tour will include the Great Hall, Mons Meg, one of the greatest medieval cannons ever made, the cells beneath that Great Hall which were used to hold prisoners of war during various conflicts. And if you're feeling hungry, stop by the Redcoat Cafe and grab a snack or meal and enjoy spectacular views of the city. After the castle, stroll down the Royal Mile. This historic street stretches from the castle to Holyrood Palace and is lined with shops, restaurants, street performers, and several notable landmarks. Along the Royal Mile sits the beautiful and historic St. Giles Cathedral. Climb up to the rooftop for panoramic views of the city. Next stop is the Museum of Edinburgh, where you'll discover Edinburgh's beginnings starting as a tiny settlement and its growth throughout the various ages. You'll view interactive displays, artifacts from everyday life throughout the centuries, displays of ancient crime and punishment, an impressive collection of historic silver, and much more. After the museum, you've probably built up quite an appetite. Well, that's not a problem, because there are tons of options for lunch along the Royal Mile. One of my favorite lunch spots is Bubba Q. And if you enjoy incredible barbecue, then this place won't disappoint. They not only serve quintessential barbecue selections, such as pulled pork, ribs, chicken, and brisket, but they also serve burgers, tacos, and hot dogs, along with some of the best fries in town. After lunch, it's time to let that meal settle with a slightly more relaxed pace. A few steps away is the real Mary King's Close, a historic close located under buildings of the Royal Mile. Here, you'll dive into the fascinating stories of the people who lived, worked, and died here over the centuries. Tours are led by guides in period dress who introduce visitors to the unique history and myths associated with this ancient underground street. After exploring the dark and mysterious closes, take a walk to the scenic Princess Street Gardens. These gardens split the old and new towns of Edinburgh and offer a tranquil escape from the hustle and bustle of the city. If you're visiting during August, you might be lucky enough to catch some events of the Edinburgh Festival. It's a good spot to relax and take in the view of the castle perched high above the gardens. If you're a fan of literature, don't miss the Writer's Museum, located just off the Royal Mile in Lady Stairs Close. It celebrates the lives of three giants of Scottish literature, Robert Burns, Sir Walter Scott, and Robert Louis Stevenson. The collection includes portraits, rare books, and personal objects, including Burns' writing desk, the printing press on which Scott's Waverley novels were first produced, and Stevenson's writing boots. As the sun begins to set, Edinburgh's historic pubs come to life. And speaking of life, did you know that the city has a haunted past? Opt for a ghost tour that takes you through the alleys and courtyards of the old town. 
while a guide regales tales of the city's haunted history. For dinner, treat yourself at the witchery by the castle. This atmospheric dining spot is perfect for those looking for a more upscale dining experience. It offers a rich tapestry of fine Scottish dishes amidst a setting of historic oak-paneled walls and candlelit nooks. After dinner, head to one of Edinburgh's traditional pubs to enjoy some live Scottish music. The Royal Oak is a small, intimate pub where you can catch live folk music almost every night. After a day filled with history, culture, food, and tales, head back to your accommodation and rest up. Day two promises more adventures, more stories, and even more of the incredible city of Edinburgh. Day two, discovering Edinburgh's cultural and natural wonders. I can't think of a better way to start day two than with a hearty breakfast at the Elephant House, which is famously known as the birthplace of Harry Potter. It's said that J.K. Rowling wrote much of her early novels here, allowing herself to be inspired by the cafe's ambience and its picturesque views. After indulging in a delicious morning meal, make your way to the National Museum of Scotland. This attraction, which is free to enter, is one of the city's highlights. As you wander through its vast galleries, you'll encounter diverse exhibits, ranging from ancient Scottish artifacts to breakthroughs in modern technology. The museum also boasts a rooftop garden, which offers panoramic views of Edinburgh and shouldn't be missed. After the museum, take a short, leisurely walk to the historic Greyfriars Kirkyard. This cemetery, steeped in history, houses tombs from the 1600s and is renowned for stories of the loyal dog, Greyfriars Bobby, as well as tales of its alleged hauntings. By this time, hunger will likely be setting in. Head over to Oink on the Royal Mile. Famous for its delectable pulled pork sandwiches, this spot allows you to see them extract the meat directly from the hog roast in the window. After lunch, embark on an adventure to Arthur's Seat. This extinct volcano, which is also the primary peak in Holyrood Park, provides a moderate hike, but those who reach its summit are rewarded with unparalleled views of Edinburgh, the surrounding sea, and the expansive countryside. After this exertion, descend and immerse yourself in royal splendor at Holyrood Palace, the official Scottish residence of the British monarch. Here, explore opulent state apartments, the historic chambers of Mary, Queen of Scots, and the meticulously manicured palace gardens. As evening approaches, consider dining at Azel, the unique dining spot that doesn't feature a traditional menu. Instead, every month they curate a new five-course tasting menu that is wholly based on locally sourced ingredients. After dinner, experience Scotland's rich oral traditions at the Scottish Storytelling Centre. Depending on their schedule, you might catch live storytelling sessions or musical events. To round off your day, take a serene evening walk on Victoria Street, one of Edinburgh's most photographed locations. Its vibrant, curved layout is rumored to have inspired J.K. Rowling's Diagon Alley in the Harry Potter series. The street's eclectic boutiques and cozy bars offer numerous opportunities to shop or simply relax with a nightcap. Rest well, as the third day in Edinburgh promises even more adventures. Day three modern Edinburgh and leisurely exploration. Kick off your final day in Edinburgh with a delicious brunch at Cairngorm Coffee Company. This trendy spot is not only known for its top-notch coffee, but also for its scrumptious avocado toasts and sandwiches, a modern twist amidst Edinburgh's traditional breakfast fare. Once you're caffeinated in full, head to Dean Village, a picturesque urban village in the heart of the city. With its quaint houses, water of Leith flowing through, and a tranquil atmosphere, you'll be forgiven for thinking you've stepped back in time. It's a perfect spot for photography and a leisurely morning stroll. From Dean Village, follow the Water of Leith walkway towards the Leith District. This once independent town has been rejuvenated in recent years and is now a vibrant area filled with boutiques, art galleries, and some of the city's most trendy cafes and restaurants. For lunch, consider dining at the kitchen in Leith a Michelin-starred restaurant that offers dishes created from the finest Scottish produce. If you're looking for something more casual, there are numerous other pubs and eateries in the area, such as Mimi's Bakehouse, where you can grab a savory pie or a delightful cake. After lunch, make your way to the Royal Yacht Britannia, 
once the floating residence for Queen Elizabeth II and the royal family. Now moored permanently in Leith, you can explore its lavish interiors, getting a glimpse into the royal life at sea. In the afternoon, head back to the city center and visit the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art. Spread across two buildings, the gallery houses an incredible collection of modern and contemporary art, including works by Picasso, Warhol, Hockney, and many Scottish artists. As the evening approaches, wander to the Stockbridge area, a chic and bohemian part of Edinburgh. The district boasts a range of independent shops, antique stores, and cozy pubs. Sunday visitors can also enjoy the Stockbridge Market, offering a mix of local produce, artisan crafts, and international street food. For your final dinner in Edinburgh, book a table at Scran and Scally, a gastropub in Stockbridge that celebrates traditional Scottish dishes with a contemporary flair. Their menu is a testament to Scotland's rich culinary heritage. End your day with a peaceful evening stroll in the Royal Botanic Garden. Founded in the 17th century, this expansive garden features plants from around the world, beautifully manicured landscapes and greenhouses. Reflect on your Scottish adventure as you meander through the gardens and maybe even start planning your next visit. There's always more to discover in this incredible city. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever been to Edinburgh? Let us know about your trip in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, would you do me a huge favor and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel so you're always first in line to watch our newest videos? I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, remember to always keep wandering with purpose. I'll catch you in the next one.